chapter 1 verse 45 Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph that the entire writings of the law which is actually the first five books of the Bible Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy and all of the prophets the major and the minor prophets their message was one it was the message of the Christ I've established in this house that the Bible is one book it is not books it is a book the whole Bible is one book that carries within it a progressive revelation concerning one character. The character is the Christ. So the Bible is a book that carries a progressive character. In the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi, we have the foreshadowing or the types and the shadows that were pointing to the substance which is Christ. In the Gospels, we have the incarnation or the fulfillment of the types, the shadows, and the prophecies of the Old Testament manifested in bodily form called Jesus the Christ. Then in the New Testament, which begins from Acts of the Apostles to Revelation, we have the message of the Christ who is the third Adam the third adam which is the last adam because we have the first adam we have the incarnate christ as the second adam we have the born again man as the last adam and jesus is the first to be born again as the last adam and all of us are patterned after the last adam which is the christ in you now, so all of this is a progressive revelation that unveils the Christ from the types and the shadows of Genesis to Malachi to the bodily appearance of God in human flesh called Christ to the manifestation of God's eternal redemptive plan in the regeneration of the born again man who is reflected in the epistles. So the Bible is one book that carries with it a consistent message concerning the person of the Christ. So the prophets, the law, they all spoke concerning Jesus of Nazareth. Then we began to establish why is the book of Ephesians considered a scripture? And we said, number one, it is because it fits into the scriptures. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 tells us, Paul speaking to Timothy says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So the scriptures which is Genesis to Malachi were given to Timothy and Timothy understood them and the scriptures made Timothy, even though he was a child, to be wise in the subject of salvation. Then the next verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for teaching so what the apostles and the prophets did were to take the scriptures and use the scriptures to teach so the book of Ephesians is the teaching ministry of Paul as drawn out of the scriptures of the prophets that is why the book of Ephesians becomes authentic to be considered as scripture and to learn from the lessons that were drawn out of the scripture which forms the body of truth or the doctrine of the believer to communicate and reflect the believer to himself. If you are with me to this point, can I hear a good amen? So the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 wherefore remember that ye being in time past gentiles in the flesh i've taught you in church here that there is no word of the scripture that has an omnibus application that is to say when you see one word it doesn't mean the same thing everywhere love does not mean love everywhere in the bible it depends on the context of usage and the person that was speaking that word so you don't take a word and apply it to the entire scriptures. You will be abusing the Bible because words differ in scripture by reason of usage and application. For example, 
John 3 16 for God so loved the world he loved the world that he gave his only begotten son first John chapter 2 verse 15 love not the world so the love not the world is different from the love that God has for the world and the world in John 3 16 is different from the world in first John 2 15 so it can be one word but it can mean different things depending on the context of usage that's why the bible is not an english book so stop using english understanding to interpret the bible the bible was originally written from the greek and the hebrew and sometimes there is the need to go back to the root to be able to understand what the context is dealing with that's why you come to church because I have the responsibility to do all of that study and bring it to you and communicate it to you so you can understand. If you're with me, say I hear. All right. So there's no omnibus application of any word in the Bible. It is depending on, on the context and the content of the scripture where that word is used. So the word Gentile in some places is used to refer to non-Jews. Anybody that was not a Jew was referred to as a Gentile. The word Gentile means you are not a Jew. Meaning, you have not been circumcised like the Jews were circumcised. Because the mark of circumcision that was given to Abraham by God was to, to seal the covenant between Abraham and God and Israel and God. So everyone that was born in Israel had to be circumcised because that was the mark of the covenant between God and the Jews in the Old Testament. Israel was constituted of two cities, Jerusalem and Judea. And we said Samaria was not part of Israel because Samaria was a city where there was a mixture of races, where Jews married other tribes and gave birth to children. So the people in Samaria were not pure Jews. That is why the Jews had a problem with the Samaritans because the Jews would not accept the Samaritans to be part of Jews. So Samaria was different. And then Ephesus was the uttermost part of the earth. That's why when Jesus was giving the instructions, he said to them, You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth, which includes Ephesus, and by interpretation includes Aquaibum. So Jerusalem and Judea were the cities of Israel, and um, the Gentiles were not part of it. So when Paul was speaking, he said in that scripture, which were called uncircumcised by the circumcision. That is the Jews called you Gentiles because you were not circumcised in that context. Gentiles are also referred to as non-believers. When a man does not believe in Jesus, he is referred to as a Gentile in the New Testament usage of the word Gentile. And we shall see that briefly, you know, from the scriptures. All right. Uh, grab your Bibles. Let's do some little Bible work here. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 4. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the loss of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. So in the New Testament, when a man doesn't know God, that man is a Gentile. He's referred to as a Gentile. First Peter 2.12 having your conversation that word conversation if you were to use english that's why again i say the bible is not an english book and secondly the bible is not a dictionary stop looking for definitions in the bible because you will mess up the bible is not a dictionary and it's not an english book so when you see the word conversation there it means lifestyle it does not mean conversation how are you good morning no 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 it means lifestyle because it's not an english book the Bible has its own language. So having your lifestyle or conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by your good works, which they shall see glorify God in the day of visitation. So he's talking about those who don't know God as referred to here as Gentiles. Gentiles who don't know God. Now, please very carefully listen to me. The covenant, which was a circumcision in the flesh, started with Abraham. It was transferred to Isaac. It was transferred to Jacob and to the whole of Israel. For the Jews, it was a mark of being in covenant with God in the flesh. But in the book of Romans chapter 2 verse 28, put it up for me. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Please follow carefully. 
for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of man but of God. What Paul was communicating to the Roman church here is that in the New Testament for you to be an Israel of God you don't have to be born in Israel and to be circumcised. Something has changed. For you to be an Israelite in the New Testament, it will be an inward circumcision of the heart, not an outward circumcision of your foreskin. Something has changed. I'm going somewhere. I need your attention. I'm going to shatter something now. I'm going to shatter something. So I need your attention clearly so that you don't get confused. So the mark of the covenant in the New Testament is not circumcising your foreskin. The mark of the covenant in the New Testament is in the spirit of a man. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 4. And such trust have we through Christ to God word, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Go back to verse 3. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. The New Testament circumcision is not a circumcising of your foreskin, it is a circumcision that takes place in the heart. Meaning that circumcision in the Old Testament was symbolic. It was a symbol. They were circumcising themselves to symbolize regeneration in the New Testament. So it also means that circumcision in the Old Testament was a type and a shadow. It was a symbol, a type, and a shadow. Philippians 3, 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil walkers. Beware of the concision. He's talking about those who celebrate Jewish people as being special people of God. Listen carefully. The Jews are no longer the special people of God. It ended. Permanently ended. There is nothing any Jewish person has any longer that is superior to you. Nothing makes them special anymore. Now that's heavy, but I'm going to give you from scripture. So when he said beware of dogs, what he's saying is beware of people that celebrate the Jewish people to be superior to the people of God. How do I know that's what he's saying? Context. Next verse. For we are, somebody say I am. We are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. And have no confidence in the flesh. That is to say, the circumcision of the outward man loses relevance. Because the circumcision of today that makes a man an Israelite is a circumcision that takes place where? In the heart. Inward. The outward has lost relevance. Now serious. Let me push it a bit, then I'll show you something. Can I push it a little more? All right. Where did Paul get this from? Because this is Paul's teaching. 
Where did Paul get this from? Now, just before I go too far, I need to remind you again for the purpose of emphasis. Turn your Bibles to the book of Romans 2.28 again because when I read it, some of you didn't follow me until I made these points. Now follow carefully. For he is not a Jew. Did you see that? Hey, did you see that? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. That a man is born in Israel in the sight of God doesn't make him a Jew. Higher. Everyone's quiet. It's fundamental. That's why it's real. Because you've been taught that Jewish people are so special. You know, Jewish people are so special. They are the people. No, no, no. The cross of Jesus rendered them common. I'm getting there. Look at it now. If you don't like it, tell it from your Bible. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. That is, even the Jews that have been circumcised in their flesh are not Jews. The ones that are born from Israelite parents are not Jews in the sight of God. Next verse. But, say but, he is a Jew which is one. He is not which is outward, but he is which is inward. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not the latter whose praise is not of man but of God didn't Jesus say to Nicodemus a Jewish ruler that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit so marvel not I say even though you are Nicodemus a Jewish ruler you must be born again otherwise you are of the flesh and you are of no relevance to me didn't Jesus say that to a Jewish ruler? Yes. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jewish people. Yet Jesus told him, you are not a Jew. You are not. Until you get born again. Born again is a circumcision of the spirit. Actually, kebatonanga. When you heard the gospel of Christ... What happened was, when the message came out of the mouth of the preacher, it came out as a sword. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. As it came out as a sword, it went straight to your heart and caught your heart. That cutting is the circumcision of the heart. That is what got you born again. So when Paul said, henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body. Which part of your body? The heart, the mark. There is a mark on every believer that when the devil sees, he runs. You don't have to shout Satan get out. Just appear and stand. Let him see the mark. He knows that you can't try this one. I don't know if I'm communicating. Now as your amen will come like thunder. Whatever has been messing around with you. I command you to look at your mark. And I command you to see this. Can somebody shout amen? Circumcision is not outward, but circumcision is inward. Then Paul now began to say, we are the circumcision that worship God we are in the spirit. We have no confidence. It, that is, we are not confident that we are born in Jerusalem. Because now it is useless. We are confident in the spirit that we are born of God. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. I thought somebody would shout I hear. You know, you hear people often say, anywhere Jews go, they prosper. Anywhere Jewish people go, don't try them. Try them. 
If you try them, you will see that you that have the mark of Christ will prosper more than them. Somebody say, what do you mean? Have you not read Jesus said, the poor you will always have? Who was he talking to? He was talking to Jewish people. So to say that Jewish people prosper all the time is a lie. Because Jesus said, you will always have the poor. And there are thieves among Jews. Thieves. For example, Judas. Judas was a thief. So nothing makes them that special. Their speciality ended because their speciality was God using them to demonstrate what happens between him and a man that is in relationship. So just like the Jews used to be special, today you are the one special. If nobody could fight Israel then and succeed, it was a symbolism. What it means is that nobody can fight you today and succeed. Who am I talking to in this building? Somebody lift your hand and shout, I am born of God. I am born of the world. I thought you would shout a powerful amen. amen. Now, so follow carefully because I'm, I'm going deeper into this. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. I say, thank you, Lord. All right. Come with me to the book of Ezekiel 36. Where did Paul get this teaching from? He got it from the scriptures. Ezekiel 36, 26. In the prophecy of the prophets, he said, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. That was the prophecy concerning the new creation in the prophets. So Paul took this scripture and used it to teach what you are hearing now from the book of Ephesians. That is the true circumcision. So while the Jew looks at his flesh, the born again man looks at his spirit. The Jew has confidence in his flesh. The born again man has confidence in what God has done in his spirit. Amen. I said, Amen. Sometimes when I see some preachers placing too much emphasis on Israel and Jerusalem, I, I, I just get sad. I get sad. You even hear some preachers tell you, once you go to Israel and pray, your prayer will be answered. That's babash. That's total fraud. Nothing makes Israel special. Israel is as common as Mbo. Nothing makes it special. Going to Israel is sightseeing. Then it makes it special. Whether you go to Israel or not, it doesn't affect you being born again. We are not Muslims. Muslims must go for pilgrimage once in a lifetime. Christianity is not Islam. Our pilgrimage took place when we got born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the circumcision that worship God where? Jesus looked at a woman at the well and said to her, You shall neither in Jerusalem nor on this mountain worship. The time cometh and now is the time when you don't need to go to Israel anymore. We are they that worship God must worship him where? The location of worship is not Israel. The location of worship is spirit and in truth. You know, some people practice Judaism and they call it Christianity. Judaism is not Christianity. Judaism is not Christianity. Yeah, they observe Feast of Tabernacle, Feast of this, Feast of that. All those... Thank you, Lord. Jesus has delivered us from many things. You don't understand. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. The special calling of Israel as a nation ended on the cross. The day Jesus said, it is finished. That was the day Israel lost relevance in the plan. That day Jesus said it is finished. What you are saying is the covenant that Israel enjoyed in types and shadow ends here. 
from now there's nothing special i'm about to open this thing to everybody didn't john say in john put it up because it's good to see scripture john chapter 1 verse 10 he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not next verse he came unto his own who are his own israel and his own Israel rejected him. So what happened? He now opened it up. But as many, no more his own, the many now have become his own. To so them gave him power to become sons of God. That scripture was, was, was a transitional truth contained in the Gospels. Because as at that time, he had not given anybody sonship. He only gave them promissory notes because he had not yet died. It was after he rose from the dead that he gave people the ability to be regenerated because he was the first begotten from the dead. I'm teaching here. Please, if you're following me, say I hear you. Okay. So on the cross, Jesus ended the speciality of Israel. He finished that covenant, ended it. And that covenant no more holds. Hallelujah. Now, to prove that it no more holds, Galatians 6.15. I want everybody like a mass choir in this building to read with me. One to go. For neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but What avails in Christ Jesus? A new creature. It's no matter whether you're born in Nazareth or born in River Jordan or born beside Mount Sinai. What matters now is not whether you came out of any tribe. What matters now is that you're born of God. The new man. The new creation born after the image of him that created him. The man born of God. That's what avails. It's not about where you came from or where you didn't come from. It's about are you born of God? To be born of God is to be born from above. And he that is born from above is above all. Now look at the amplified version of that verse. For neither is circumcision now of any importance nor uncircumcision. But only a new creation. The result of a new birth and a new nature in Christ Jesus, the Messiah. That is what is important. Next verse. Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule. Who discipline themselves and regulate their lives by this principle. Even upon the true Israel of God. When you are born again, you are not an Israelite. You are the true Israel. If you came from Israel, you are a natural Jew. But when you got born again, you now become a spiritual Jew of God. The true Israel. The true Israel is not in the flesh. A true Israelite is a born again man in the spirit. Glory to God. Am I talking to somebody here? Follow me because I'm going to show you something else. So, right in this building is a gathering of true Israelites. And if you are one among those Israelites, let your amen slap the devil. Amen. Ephesians 2.12 now. That at that time, you were without Christ. Being aliens, that's what you were. Take note of the tenses, you were. You were, not you are, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. So, having no hope and without God in the world, you were godless, you were hopeless because you were not a Jew. You did not belong to the Abrahamic covenant of being a Jewish person. But how many of you are aware today that any Jew that is not born again is a Gentile to us? Any Jew that is not born again 
is a Gentile. He is without God. He is without hope in this world. And any Gentile that is born again is a Jew. The true Israel of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 now. But now. Somebody say now. But now. Where? Somebody say I'm in Christ. But now in Christ Jesus. You who sometimes were far off. Are made nigh. By the blood of Christ. You are made nigh. Somebody say I am made nigh. Give me the amplified. But now in Christ Jesus. You who once were so far away. Through by in the blood of Christ have been brought near. You are no more far. How near in him? Hallelujah. You are in him. The blood of Christ unifies every race. The blood of Christ collapses Jewish people and Gentiles. The blood of Christ destroyed that barrier. For God so loved the Jews. Huh? For God so loved Israel. What does he say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be damned because he has not believed in the only begotten son of God. You believe the gospel. You are born again. You are the true Israel of God. And so neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but the new creation. Praise God. The new creation. The born again man. Born after the image of God. The man carrying God. The man that is joined to God. Him and God are one. Nothing can separate them. What a joy. Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. First John 2, 2. Who is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. Talking about the love of God now made available to everybody. Nothing special about the Jews anymore. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for Jews. For all to be testified when. In due time, verse 7, O oh, Kabosha, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. This is Paul talking about his calling and ministry. So God's love displayed in Christ Jesus makes the blood of Jesus a unifying factor. The blood of Jesus is our unifying factor. We are both Jews and Gentiles. We are sinners. And only the blood can save both Jew and Gentile. Nothing makes them special anymore. All have seen Jews and Gentiles. Whosoever believeth shall be saved. Jews and Gentiles. The cross destroyed that thing that made them special. Because when the cross showed up, the typology, the drama they were acting on behalf of God, trying to typify the new creation, ended when the cross showed up. I'm teaching here. If you're hearing, shout, I hear you. Yeah, it ended. It ended. Completely ended. So after then, the blood of Jesus took care of everything on our behalf. In the Old Testament, the blood of animals was for the Jews. But today, the blood of Jesus is for the Jew and the Gentile and the whole world. Are you following? Look at verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 2, where we are. For he is our peace, who hath made both one. He has made, who are the both? 
Jews and Gentiles. He has made them one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So there was a wall of partition between Jews and Gentiles. Watch this. In Bible days, when they come to the synagogue, the synagogue was split into two. That word wall of partition was both metaphorical and literal in this context. Okay, because what Paul was trying to communicate was the barricade that existed that made Jewish people special. So in Bible days, when they come to the synagogue, there was a big physical wall built in the synagogue that demarcated the section of Gentiles from the section of Jews. The Jews were the ones that had access into the inner part of the synagogue, while the Gentiles sat in the outer part. So when they arrived at the synagogue, Gentiles will stay right up to the wall. But Jewish people will come and pass and pass the wall and go into the inner places of the synagogue. That made them special. That gave them a special treatment, special advantage, special everything. On the cross, when Jesus shouted, it is finished. When he lifted up his hands and declared his mission to save man. When he gave up the ghost and went to hell. On the third day when he rose from the dead. That wall that divided the Jew from the Gentile. Determining our relevance. The wall collapsed. From that day, wherever the Jew enter, the Gentile can enter. In fact, the Gentile can enter where the Jew cannot enter. That was the end of their relevance. Their typology finished on the cross. Am I teaching here? That's why it now says, For he is our peace, who have made both one, and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. No more partition. Going to Israel is no more a plus. Are you hearing me now? If you go to Israel, and I go to Oron, when we come back, all of us traveled. Didn't we all travel? The only difference is that you went by plane. I went by ground transport. But we all went somewhere. And we all came back. Safely. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting blessed in this service? That is what Jesus has done for us. That's what Jesus has made available to us. Many believers don't know because they have not been taught. You are not a second class citizen. Oh no. You are a member of the family of God. You are in Christ. Christ is in you. What cannot fight Christ cannot fight you. What cannot defeat Christ cannot defeat you. What cannot stand before Christ cannot stand before you. Why? You are bone of his bones. He is flesh of your flesh. You are in him. He's in you. Am I teaching here? Thank you Lord. I say thank you Lord. No more distinction. No more distinction. Paul said that wall is broken. He has destroyed it. Look at verse 15. Because he has broken the middle wall of partition, he had abolished in his flesh the enmity. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twin one new man so make him peace. To make where? In himself of twin he took two people gentile and jew in himself and out of the two of them produce a new man the born again man is not a jew he's not a gentile he's a new kind of humanity if any man be in christ he's a new creation it's a new creation of god that never existed does not have a history does not have a past therefore cannot have generational cause because there's no history cannot have ancestral cause because there is no history he is a new kind of humanity that never existed lift your hands and shout i am born of god 
What killed your mother cannot kill you. What stopped your father cannot stop you. Your father died a poor man. You can't die a poor man. You have access to the riches of Christ. I feel like I'm talking to somebody here. Your mother died of stroke. You cannot die of stroke. The DNA in your mother is not the DNA in you. You carry the DNA of God. Whatsoever is born of God. The Bible tells us, Hebo Shakata, being born again, not of corruption, Corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. The word seed is a Greek word sperma. The word sperma is the English word sperm. You are born of the sperm that gave birth to Jesus. The same sperm that gave birth to Jesus gave birth to you, meaning that the same DNA in Jesus is the same DNA in you. If he cannot be sick, I cannot be sick. He cannot be poor, I cannot be poor. He cannot die, I cannot die. They shall surely gather, just like they cannot succeed against God, they cannot succeed against me. If you're the one I'm revealing, let your amen slap the devil. You share the same DNA with God. Last night I woke up about 2 a.m. Praying and meditating over this message. I heard myself shouting, shouting to myself. I am born of God. Born. Born of God. And I heard myself say, the same life inside God is the same life inside me. Who? Oh. Who? Oh. Oh, when you know that, you fear no more. I'm born of the sperm of God. Same DNA. My father died of whatever. I can't die of it. No, his DNA is different from mine. When I got born again, something changed. Bloodline changed. Status changed. And history changed. If any man be, he is. All things. Behold. 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 Touch your neighbor. Say, behold. Why, why you suffer what others suffer is because you're not beholding. You need to behold. When you behold and you see yourself in the light of scripture. When you see who you are by looking at the right mirror. He that looketh into the perfect law of liberty. He not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in all his deeds. Somebody shall this man. I am that man. You keep looking at yourself in that mirror. You keep seeing yourself in that mirror. And you begin to say, what God says I am, I am. Who God says I am, I am. What God says I have, I have. What God says I can do, I can do. When they say you can't do it, take a step back and look again. Tell yourself, what God says I can do, I can do. Take a step forward. If they say you can't do it, take another step again. Remind yourself, who God says I am, I am. What God says I can do, I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I prophesy over somebody as 2017 opens up, you will defeat impossibilities. If your amen is louder than your neighbor, you will defeat impossibilities. What others cannot do, you will do it. The spirit of a champion is inside you. The spirit of a winner is inside you. If your amen is louder, receive manifestation. Lift your right hand and shout, I can do all things. Through Christ in me who strengthens me. Sit down, cross your legs, shout, I am in charge. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus has abolished. Somebody shout, abolish. He has abolished. The Greek word for abolish is the word katigio. It means to render useless and to render ineffective. He has abolished, meaning he has rendered useless and ineffective in his flesh, the enmity. No more enmity. He has abolished it. No more symbols. No more types and shadows. What we have today is the reality. 
No more celebrating a feast of Pentecost or a feast of weeks or a feast of Sabbath. No, Jesus is our Sabbath. Sabbath is no more a day. Sabbath is a person. Pentecost is no more a day. Pentecost is the Holy Ghost. I don't have to observe a day when the person lives on my inside. The, the feast were shadows typifying the reality that was to come. Now the reality is there. The shadows are no more to be celebrated. I'm teaching here. Why hold on to shadows when the substance is there? And as long as you're holding on to shadows, you cannot hold the substance. You have to leave one for another. So if you're still holding shadows, you have left the substance. So if you're holding the substance, you can't hold the shadows. How can I have Holy Ghost and be looking for Goya oil? How can I have Holy Ghost and be carrying a bottle of oil? That bottle cannot carry the power of God. I am the bottle of oil. When I move, the oil is moving. I have the Holy Ghost. Who am I talking to in this building? Lift your hand and shout, I am anointed. The Holy Ghost himself lives inside me. Amen. I don't need Goya. I don't need olive oil. I have Holy Ghost. <sighs> Sit down and listen. Somebody said to me somewhere, Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a word! What a word! The good thing about the word of his grace is when you hear it, it just excites your spirit, man, because it's a witness of the Holy Ghost. Please don't go away. It's important that you quickly.